Hey everybody, how we doing today? Be nah, it's not a beautiful day. It's a crappy day here in the Florida Keys. It's all windy and nasty out there. <laughs> So, no fishing and hence no fishing videos. But I kind of have a kind of an interesting one that usually I would post on my other site. But I figured, hey, why not? It's actually pretty cool and it was a huge pain in my ass. So, today's video is going to be about my Patreon and Patreon supporters. It's more specifically, a monthly drawing I'm going to do. Uh, for those that don't know, Patreon is a way for you guys as view viewers to support YouTubers. Show me the money. Uh, there's a platform called Patreon. You can go to their website, look up Key West Kayak Fishing. Brings up all my information and how it works. And basically, you donate a monthly allowance. I get that money and it allows me to improve my filming gear, replace my corroded and fish corroded and broken fishing stuff, or a lot of times if I have any left over, I invest it back into my www.allaboutthebait.com web store. But to be honest with you, the biggest impact that it does is it allows me to separate myself from the whole YouTube thing. Now for me, the priority is fishing. And I really enjoy doing the videos because it, it, it has an, an added challenge to the actual fishing. So I really enjoy that. However, I don't enjoy is all the backside drama that goes with doing YouTube. Uh, the, the threats of the demonetization that if you don't follow these new regs, regulations and regulations that you don't even know what they are and they won't even tell you, you're going to get demonetized, you won't make any money, will shut your channel down. Or the peer pressure side of it to do all this light your hair on fire and dance around like an idiot type of thing in order to get views. And I don't want to do any of that stuff. All I want to do is to go out fishing, film it, throw it up there, and let you guys check it out. And that's really what that lump sum of Patreon support does. What I might lose by not doing all that stuff over here, I have this lump sum that just replaces it, so I can just disregard all that stuff. And it just makes it a lot more livable for me and a lot more interesting. But what today's video is about is about a drawing I do on a monthly basis to kind of give back. Um, people support me and that's huge and I always have a very grateful for that. So part of that is not only saying thank you but also trying to make an interesting side part. And what, what that is, is monthly contests. I do these drawings. Um, it might be I give away some of my allaboutthebait.com gear when I get new stuff in. But what's more interesting for me is to try to go out and find more interesting stuff that I think that you guys would enjoy. Um, in this instance, you saw about my dealer. Well, it was this sponge dealer. Um, and uh, the way that story worked out is, is that I met some guys out on the water when I was fishing. They were out there doing something, went and talked to them, and they were actually harvesting sponges. And I, oh, okay, that's cool, because in the Keys, uh, we harvest fish for selling for fish, uh, fresh fish. We have the uh, lobsters. We've got the stone uh, crab claws. We've got shrimp. Okay, so we have all these resources that we sell beyond normal tourism and fishing and so forth. But then I was also looking in and I found out that they're sustainable. Okay, it's uh, the way they do it is there's actually the sponge head part of it, but there's also the root part of it. And the way with the regulations are is that they're allowed to basically take the sponge head, but they have to leave the root because that root will repopulate and grow another head there. So I thought that was pretty interesting as well. Save the environment, but use the environment. So I thought, oh, okay, that, that kind of makes a great kind of a gift idea. It's a little bit quirky. I mean, it's not super sending off diamonds and gold, but it's something very unique that I don't think people would ever have gotten before, a fresh out of the water sponge. So I go out and I talk to my dealer and ran into him, found out where they're uh, anchored up and say, hey, can you sell me some sponges? And yeah, so he showed me all the different sizes, the different types. I said, uh, what's the most popular? And they said these standard medium-sized bathing sponges. So, okay, so set me up with those. I said, okay, but you gotta come back in a week because they have to process them. 
And the way that works is that they basically collect all these sponges, they'll put them in a mesh bag and then just hang them over the side of their boat, just right up to the, the water level. And then as the boat gets wake and then it starts getting waves, it basically cleans the sponge because they're initially, they're full of organisms and sand and so forth. So they need a, some time for those organisms to die or to leave and the sand to wash out and so forth. And it basically cleans them. So I go out there in a, a week's time and then uh, guys said, oh, come back in, in tomorrow, another couple days because they're not ready yet. So I got to go back out another couple days. And remember, okay, it's not like he's on the side of the road where I'm going up to some store and getting these. I'm out in the water, so I have to undo my kayak, get everything loaded, go out there, find them, come back in. It's a hassle each time. So I go out there a the couple days, and then there's another guy there. He said, oh, he's not here. He got to come back tomorrow. Great. Some of these days I can fish, so it's not that big a deal. Other days it's just windy and crappy, and I just want the sponges. So finally I go back out there and he's there so happy days gives me my 20 sponges and boom i'm all set so then it came down to like well what am i going to do with these like if i mail these in the u.s mail it takes two or three days it's in a cellophane plastic bag with no circulation and my viewer is going to get that and say oh what's that and slice it open and then like dead fish <laughs> but what i was doing though is once i got it from him i was smelling it and when you smell it it's just it's like a fresh ocean mist type of thing. It was just, it didn't stink at all. I was like, wow, that's pretty cool, weird. But uh, okay, I'll let it dry and see what happens because that's when things tend to get stinky when they kind of get aerated. So after a couple of days, I just try it again and nothing. It just smells like sand, ocean sand, just nice and fresh. I'm like, great. Then we happened to have a storm push through for two or three days of rain. So, okay. So I stuck the bag out there and just had it hung out in the rain and it got doused for two or three days and then smelled them. And same thing. They're just fresh in ocean, just a little bit less. Then uh, that knocked a bunch of the sand and stuff out and then let them dry for a couple more days. And now we're at it. They're just all ready to go. I mean, never touched a chemical except the ocean and the rain. So that's how pure these guys are going to be. So uh, what I figured I'd do is just put them in a Ziploc baggie like this and mail them off. But just to kind of kick it up a bit, I figured what I'll do as well is I'll throw in some of my uh, allaboutthebait.com stickers as well. And then I wanted to sweeten it up a bit as, on top of that. So I figured, ah, I'll go to my local shop where I get all my candy gifts from. And that's Kermit's Key West Lime Shop. Now you might thinking, oh, that wasn't too difficult, but wait, there's more, all right? Going after those sponges was nothing when it was compared to getting this candy. I went out and I actually drove to the Mallory Square area to meet a buddy, an artist out there. about one and a half miles from my house. Get out there, talk to him, no big deal. Get my motorcycle, I'll go pick up the candy and come home. Get on the motorcycle, nothing. Turn the key button, nothing. Just nothing, what the heck? The battery must have just died and was running low so it might have just not enough charge. All right, so cop off the bike and I walk one and a half miles back home. Get my tools, get my bicycle, pedal one and a half miles back to the motorcycle. Get the battery, one and a half miles back home again. Throw it on the charger for a few hours. It was having problems, not charging. So I'm thinking that battery's fried. I tried the best to top it off as much as I could because I just wanted to get the motorcycle home. Got the battery, one and a half miles back. Install the battery and then 
boom, I forgot the nuts and bolts for the battery terminals because I had taken those off because I cleaned up the terminals because I thought maybe it was a bad contact and I left them on the table. So one and a half miles back, got the nuts and bolts, one and a half mile bicycle back, installed the battery there, turned it on, barely a flicker. God, the battery's fried, dang it. So I couldn't leave my bike out there by Duval Street. So boom, walked it one and a half miles, not some little scooter moped, not some bicycle, full on motorcycle, pushing that thing a mile and a half in traffic all the way back home. Then I had to go get my bike. So I had to walk one and a half miles back, get my bicycle, pedal one and a half miles and I was done. And I still didn't have the stupid candy. So today, got the bike 1.2 miles, got the candy 1.2 miles back. You might hear a little humming noise. That's me trying to salvage that battery, but I've got a new one on the way, but got the candy. So I'm also going to throw in some key lime saltwater taffy and some key lime pie candy, hard candy as well. I'll throw a few pieces of each. And that's kind of also why I like doing these videos. It kind of features one of some of these local businesses. This is old Kermit shop. He's got a couple of stores down there. Um, yeah. So that's going to be our January Patreon giveaway. I'm a little bit behind, but you can understand why. Um, the way it works is, is that I take my uh, Patreon supporters. I go through uh, if they are wanting to be part of these, they'll have a check box so that I can see their addresses. Then I basically draw some random numbers and put them in a bag and ship them to these people. Don't have to do anything. You don't even have to know. You're just going to get a package. You won. Thanks from QS kayak fishing. Um, however, there's some issues where people first signed up. It, it gives you the option to check bar. Do you want to be part of future giveaways or receive products from this person. If you check the box yet, the yes, then I get your address and you're a part of it. If you don't check the box, then I don't see your address and I can't get a hold of you. So I don't put you in part of the uh, giveaway because I just want draw, bag, mail, not a bunch of emails and tracking people down and stuff. And I've got 20 of these I'm gonna be giving away this month. So it's just too much work to do it that way. But that's what we're gonna do if you wanna see who won. Go to my Patreon QS kayak fishing and you can see the drawing happening. But uh, otherwise, huge thank you to my Patreon supporters. It just makes such an impact across the board. And huge thank you to my uh, viewers out there. That helps as well. So anyways, thank you guys for watching and I will see you next video. Bye.